Welcome everybody. On behalf of the Rye Free Reading Room, Catherine had to step away, but um, my name is Ashley. For those of you who don't know me, I live up in Ossining and um, I post about food and recipes at Big Flavors from a Tiny Kitchen. And I do this program with rye usually about once a month. Um, and today we're going to make grain bowls with some roasted winter veggies and we'll do soft cooked eggs to go on top because I like a nice um, kind of jammy egg to go along with it. Um, you don't have to top it with an egg if you don't want to. If you prefer hard cooked eggs, I'll walk you through how to do that. Um, is anybody cooking along today? You can feel free to unmute if you'd like. Um, you don't have to, you can type it in the chat. I'll try to keep my eyes on the chat, but. Um, Thank you. I, this is Rachel, I'm partially uh, cooking along with you. I've made some in advance, but. Oh, beautiful. Did you already cook your grains? I'm in the process of cooking my grains and I've already cooked the squash, acorn squash and Brussels sprouts. Oh, beautiful. You're like, you can, can just hang out and relax and kind of keep up. So, all right. So I will walk you guys through. If you have any questions, um, those of you who've done classes with me before know I'm very open to, you know, unmute, ask a question, tell me to slow down, <laughs> tell me not to talk so fast, whatever, very laid back. I want you to be comfortable cooking. Um, in the kitchen with me. So a quick note on, I'm going to call it faro. It might be pronounced faro. I don't really know. Um, but that's not the important part. The important part is it's a grain. It's like nice and chewy. There's a couple different um, types that you can get. I like to get, if you can find a quick cooking one, I buy this from Trader Joe's. It Once it's boiling, it's like 10 minutes, which I love. And you can cook it in advance and you can cool it down and you can even freeze it. Um, so I like this type. If you have a different uh, variety, I know Bob's Red Mill makes one. I think it takes like 20 minutes or so to cook, but just follow the directions on the back of the package. And mine has um, instructions for boiling, simmering, or to make soup. Um, I've tried the simmering method before. I don't like it as much. I feel like, um, I don't know. I feel like boiling kind of like pasta in a pot of water or broth, I usually just do water. I feel like that kind of makes the best texture. It's kind of chewy. Um, if you don't like this type of grain or you can't find it, I've done this with um, Frika, F-R-E-E-K-E-H before. That's kind of like a nutty, um, I think I might have a bag actually, I can show you. Do I have a bag easily accessible? Just ducking into a, this is smoked green wheat, Frika. Um, you can get these like health food stores. I bought this one from Yara Noosh. It's a Middle Eastern market or Mediterranean market in like White Plains area uh, here in New York. So that's another option. It adds a really interesting flavor. You could, I mean, you could use rice. You could do whatever type of grain you like, but um, this recipe is super versatile because you can kind of use whatever veggies you have hanging out. I, I need to move my what's out of my oven. <laughs> um, so we're going to preheat the oven to 400. And then going to get um, a saucepan that's big enough. We're going to boil two cups of farro. Um, so this says the boiling instructions on this particular one. Bring a large pot of water or broth to a boil. Add the bag of farro and boil for 10 to 12 minutes drain and season to taste. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of cold water in here and let it start to come to a boil. I was able to get most of this stuff from, um, if you live nearby in uh, Yorktown Heights, there's a Trader Joe's and there's a BJ's wholesale club right across the street or pretty much across the street. And I like, I've been a wholesale club member for a long time. So I love that I can go to both of those now because um, one of my favorite ingredients is capers and that's in the um, dressing for this recipe. And I buy them in bulk because I love them so much. So I buy these giant, <laughs> giant jars of capers. It's, it's literally 16.9 ounces of capers. And the brine in here, they come um, brined. You can use this brine to add seasoning or salt to things. Um, it's really like, you don't have to ditch the brine if you don't want to. So it's a very fun ingredient. All right, so oven's preheating to 400. Got a pot of water, large pot of water getting ready to come to a boil. 
And then I'm gonna do another pot of water for the egg. You could also top this with a fried egg if you like. Um, I'm gonna walk you through soft boiled eggs. So we'll cut into it, the white will be set, but the yellow, the yolk will be nice and runny. If you prefer a hard cooked egg, the way I do those is I put the eggs in the pot first, cover it by like an inch or two with cold water, bring it to a rolling boil. So like you really want it to be boiling, not just a couple bubbles, but really boiling. Then <laughs> this is the wrong way. Put a lid on it, turn the heat off and just let it sit for 10 minutes. And then you can um, run them under cold water to cool them off. That'll have the yolk all the way cooked through. Um, but for soft cooked, we're gonna bring the water to a boil first, and then we'll lower, once it's at a rolling boil, we'll lower the eggs in and cook them for just seven minutes. And we'll put them in an ice bath to stop the cooking. That way the yolks won't continue to cook once we got them at that really nice um, jammy level. Um, and with either hard or soft cooked eggs, you can cook them in advance and um, keep them in the fridge. So even with a soft cooked egg, you can, this on, I have these both on high heat right now. Um, even with a soft cooked egg, once you cool it down in the ice bath, you can dry it off, put it in the fridge. I usually mark them with like a pencil or a Sharpie or or a pen or whatever. I'll put an S if it's a soft cooked egg, an H for a hard cooked egg. And then when you go to use it, um, like if you want to enjoy it over like in some ramen or whatever, you can just gently peel it, especially the soft cooked eggs are a little, you gotta be delicate because the middle is liquid. <laughs> um, and you peel it, you can just run it under warm water for a moment just to kind of warm up that outside and it'll still be beautifully jammy. Anyway, that's a favorite over here, so. Um, Okay, so we're gonna roast some veggies. Again, whatever veggies you like to use, you can use. Um, these are delicata squash. I got two because they were kind of small. The skin is edible. The skin on an acorn squash is also edible, but if you're using acorn squash, I find that it takes a little longer to like really cook because the skin's a little bit thicker. So you could either roast it a little bit longer or you could, um, you could just not eat the skin either way. But I like, I like these, they're a little more manageable. Butternut squash would be great. Those are just like super annoying to cook to me. For some reason, I just find them unwieldy. So I'm just gonna cut off the two ends. Squash are always like a little tricky to cut because they're dense. I'll set it up on the end and I'm gonna go straight down the middle. You could save these, the seeds if you want to roast them. I am not going to this time, but I'll pop them in my compost. Butternut squash is actually one of the few things that I always buy kind of pre-prepped from the grocery store, at least peeled, because they're just like, take some elbow grease to get through them. And that skin I don't think is very edible. So got those cut open. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What'd they, you say? Stain, they stain your hands too. Oh yeah, they totally do. Yeah. Um, just gonna get a bowl for the seeds. I'm using. You can use your hands. You can use a spoon. I'm using. If you have a grapefruit spoon that's got the little teeth on it, you can use that to scoop out the inside. Um, if you were gonna try to roast the seeds, a lot of times the way that I find it easiest to get the seeds separated from all this stringy fibrous stuff is I'll scoop it all into here and I'll fill it with cold water. And then it's kind of easy to like rub them in the, the stringy stuff will kind of separate a little more easily. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just wanna kind of get as much of that out as you can. This will be a fun, if you have a kid that doesn't mind digging their hands in somewhere it kind of feels a little funky. That would be a fun job for them. My son would probably not want to touch that. He would, <laughs> he'd be kind of grossed out. So I'm just gonna do this. I've also got um, Brussels sprouts and what else are we roasting today? Oh, just those two are gonna get roasted. I have some broccoli in the fridge. That would be good to use also. 
Um, and this, these type of dishes I like too, because you can kind of keep the components separate on the tray if you want. And then everybody can, at the dinner table can kind of pick whichever ingredients they like and have extra of one thing or less of another thing. And sometimes if I'm cooking a grain like this, I'll cook extra just so that I can either freeze it or have it in the fridge so that I can make bowls with various leftovers later in the week. Like if you made tacos or something and you had some cooked um, whatever type of grain, you could make a bowl, a grain bowl with that and your taco toppings and just kind of pile everything in different areas. And then it looks very intentional, but you're just kind of using leftovers and saving yourself cook time um, on another day. So, all right, we're gonna slice these into about half inch thick slices. I'm just putting the flat side down so it's a little more steady. You just want them to be around the same size. And you kind of have to like rock back and forth a little bit with squash. There's so many fun varieties too. You could really experiment. Um, if you have local farmer's markets that you like, does Ryan have a farmer's market? I don't know that I've been if they do. There's a ton of different ones around here though. So that's always a fun option. Yeah, also, Ryan has one, but it's off for the winter. I think it doesn't start until May 5th. Oh, that's good to know. I'll have to check so that the good out. One, the good one near me, I think, is in Larchmont, which is all year. It's at the train station. Oh, let me write that down. I'll have to, I haven't checked And then that I hear one. Sleepy um, Sleepy Hollow or Tarrytown is another good one. So, okay, so you said Larchmont. Yeah, okay, Larchmont. Right. Is that on train Saturdays, station. do you know? Saturdays, yep. Okay, so the Terry, so I'm in Austin. The Tarrytown Sleepy Hollow Market is great. Yeah. I will say their outdoor location is fantastic. They're in the... They're indoors at like the either elementary school or middle school right now. I went a couple weeks ago. They're, it's not every week. It's like every two weeks or something or twice a month. It's very crowded. So yeah. if you're at all concerned about being in small spaces with lots of people in the winter when there's yeah. <laughs> things afoot, you might want to wait. They'll be back, I think, also in May outdoors. Um, Ossining is outdoors. They're good. They don't have a ton of vendors. The Pleasantville yeah. Farmer's Market is wonderful. And they, I think they're outdoors all year. I'm not 100% sure. Um, oh. But yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many options out here. It's really great. It is great. So I'm going to kind of throw these haphazardly on the sheet pan for now. And I'm going to get the Brussels sprouts out. Um, about a pound. And I've had varying degrees of um, cleaning that needs to happen on Brussels sprouts in the past. So how big is this bag? This is a two pound bag. I'm gonna get some of it out. I usually trim the end. Just looking at my water, it's almost boiling. I usually trim the end, the little stem bit off because that's really tough. And then I'll cut it in half. And I usually peel just like one layer of leaf off of the outside. And I find that usually is good. Sometimes you'll see some kind of funky like crevices and stuff in the Brussels sprout. And occasionally you will find some unwelcome friends. Oh. Um, that's, yeah, it's part of nature, but definitely not something you want to eat. So look closely. I like, I, they were kind of like tucked in the little wrinkles and stuff. So <laughs> just a note, my water for the grains is about boiling. So I'm going to measure out two cups. And go right into the water. So. One. This bag has like about one and a half cups in it. So I'm gonna open another. A lot of stores do them, have them in like bulk bins also. Different types of grains, which is nice. Just give it a little stir. Um, and then what did I say? 10 minutes, 
We're gonna leave it boiling, but you might need to turn it down just a little bit so it doesn't like boil over. Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. And then my egg, the water for my egg, you can see um, just small bubbles right now. So I wanna wait till it's really at a ro rolling boil. And if you're watching the replay, I'm sorry, you only get one angle. The, the Zoom overlords only want us to have one angle if we record to the cloud. So um, hi over there. I see another librarian. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, so yes, while we're waiting for that, just gonna continue trimming the Brussels sprouts. It can be a little tedious, but um, there are like prepped Brussels sprout wise at the store. Sometimes you can find them already kind of shaved. So they're like cut in half and then sliced thinly. But a lot of times they kind of dry out. It wouldn't really work for this recipe unless you were gonna have um, the sprouts raw, but it does make a great um, shaved Brussels sprouts raw, really does make for a great salad. Um, it's like interesting, different textures, different than lettuce. It's a little heartier, but it's not quite like eating raw cabbage. Ooh, getting close to boiling over here. Okay. Um, we have, while I'm doing the tedious Brussels sprout cleaning, um, our next, my next class with the Rye Free Reading Room um, is on Wednesday, March 15th at 6 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna make sloppy joes and you can use whatever type of ground protein you like. So I'll probably use turkey. It's great with beef, bison meat, if you can find that is great. Um, and if you don't do meat, you can do a plant-based ground meat alternative. Um, my kind of go-to when I'm substituting ground meat in a recipe is Beyond. I feel like their Beyond ground meat is a really nice substitute. So I'm just kind of like bulk doing that. Oh, I do have um, also tomorrow, let me paste this in. My event schedule is in the chat tomorrow if you're around and want to make some plant-based tacos and restaurant style guacamole. Um, making sweet potato, roasted sweet potato and black bean tacos. And that has a cilantro chimichurri and some quick pickled red onions. And then we do restaurant style guac that's delicious. Um, so I'd love to have you join for that if you'd like. And Tuesday, the other one I have in February is Tuesday the 21st. It's, um, we're gonna make curried pumpkin soup and a massaged kale salad. And I'll show you after I, get, after I get this going, I can show you there's like one ingredient, it's nutritional yeast. It might be a little tricky to find. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like in case you wanna join that class and wanna know what it looks like, or just so you know, if you plan to use it in anything else. All right, got them all halved. I'm just gonna kind of, as I peel the edges, I'm gonna add them to my sheet pan. Tiny kitchen Tetris over here. Ah, my water is bubbling quite a bit now. So I'm gonna take a slotted spoon and I'm gonna very gently, one by one, lower each egg into the boiling water um, I put four on the recipe because it's like a four serving thing. I'm cooking a couple extra so that I'll have them. Like I was saying, we can have them left over um, in the fridge hanging out. So once they're all in, seven minutes, and then we'll put them in an ice bath. So the lowering them in gently is just so they don't crack on their way in. cooking six. Alexa, set an egg timer for seven minutes. Okay, so that, and I do want the eggs to be pretty rapidly boiling, but if, again, if it looks like it's gonna over boil, I'll turn it down just a, just a tiny bit. Um, and if you want like a little more cooked, but not quite 
um, hard cooked, you could do eight minutes, nine minutes. Um, Got to kind of play around with it. Honestly, the way I usually do um, eggs when I'm cooking them is I use my Instant Pot and I put a cup of water in there. Um, and then I have some different times, amounts of time saved. I find my old Instant Pot cooked a little more slowly than my new one does. So, um, but it's really easy if you have a pressure cooker like that to cook eggs. Hey, Ashley, I'm just curious on that pumpkin soup that you were talking about. Yes. Does that use like fresh pumpkin? No. Oh, very good question. Canned pumpkin. And <laughs> um, I have a, I think, funny story about that. <laughs> um, my years ago, I've been making this recipe for a long time. And years ago, my father-in-law was coming over for dinner and wanted to help. He's like, oh, can I get anything from the store? I was like, oh, yeah, I want to make this curried pumpkin soup. Could you grab a can of pumpkin for me? Yep, absolutely. Great. He brought it. I made the soup. We sat down to eat, and my husband was like, um, How much sugar did you put in this? And I was like, There's like a tablespoon of honey in this whole giant pot. And he's like, It's really sweet. I'm like, There's no way. It can't be, it can't be that sweet. There's like literally a tablespoon of honey. I thought he was being dramatic. And then I tasted it, and I was like, Whoa, something something has happened. So I looked at the can that was in the recycling bin and it was pumpkin pie. So it's canned pumpkin pie mix. <laughs> so the problem with that is a can of pumpkin also has a picture of a piece of pumpkin pie on it. <laughs> they also make, <laughs> they also make canned pumpkin pie mix that has additional spices and sweetener and whatever. So, um, learn from my mistakes that there's very few instances where I feel like you can't really salvage a recipe that's gone awry. Like we'll try to make it work, but that we could not eat. It was not great. Um, so yes, canned pumpkin. I suppose you could use fresh pumpkin. I just um, haven't. Maybe I'll experiment with that. To find a, some interesting pumpkins. Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It's like certain things I'm, I like making from scratch. I am so not against taking help from the grocery store. And yeah. even, you know, with a recipe like this, um, take help from the store. If you don't have time to like cook a grain, I'll show you in a moment. There's these pouches that have like pre-cooked grains. You, um, you microwave them for like 90 seconds and that's it. So you could, you could just roast some veggies. You could even roast them ahead of time if you wanted. And then your grains are like already cooked. Like you don't have to be, you don't have to be a hero. It's totally fine. Um, I am just, before I put this in the oven, I'm going to put some ice cubes in a bowl and cold water so that as soon as the eggs are done, we can put them in the ice bath so that they will stay, uh, they won't cook too long. We're working to get that nice runny yolk and we don't want to, ruin it by letting it overcook literally two feet off camera in my freezer here <laughs> the only the only thing really outside of this view of my tiny kitchen is my refrigerator and then the entranceway so ice cubes cold water i don't like doing this too long before they um cook because i want to make sure that it stays nice and cold so, um, oh, I said you could do two different sheet pans, one for your squash, one for your um, Brussels sprouts and the recipe, which you totally can. I'm going to choose the option of less dishes tonight, and I'm going to do one sheet pan that's a little too crowded, but that's okay. Um, you want like about two tablespoons or so of olive oil. Maybe a little more. Let's kind of see how many how many veggies you've got going there, and then I'm gonna season with kosher salt and fresh cracked pepper. Ooh, actually, feel free to use just regular kosher salt and black pepper. But I have this grill seasoning blend. Um, I have the recipe on my side. If anybody wants it, I'll post the link. It's just it's like a little bit more than salt and pepper. It's got um, I'm gonna say garlic powder and 
some paprika. So it's not, it doesn't have a ton of extra flavor, but it's like just enough to make it a little, have a little more oomph. And I love it on salmon, veggies. I'm just trying to find like all of the ways to use it. Which timer is this? Alexa, stop. Alexa, how much time is left? Okay, my egg timer is almost done, but the faro timer is done. So I'm gonna strain that into the sink. I have a colander in there. And then I'm just gonna let that sit and hang out for a moment. Cause I want it to still be warm when we toss the vinaigrette in it. So just kind of tossing these veggies a little bit to coat them. And I'll put this in for 20 minutes. I forgot to name that first timer. If you have uh, an, if you have an ALEXA in your kitchen, you can name your timers, which comes in pretty handy um, for different things, but I forgot the first one. Um, so yeah, with this squash, you just want it, the veggies in like one layer if you can. Alexa, set a veggie timer for 20 minutes. Okay, so that's going, we're gonna work on the vinaigrette. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna put it in, there's my egg timer. <laughs> All the timers, Alexa, stop. All the timers. Let's put these in our ice bath. Depending how much I chit chat while I'm cooking, sometimes they all go off around the same time. So I'm just plunging them right into the ice water. And if I could, you know, switch out the water, add more cold water to it occasionally if I want, but. I'm just trying to make sure that they stop cooking and you want them to be submerged. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water to mine so that they're fully covered. And this is just, again, to stop them from cooking so they stay nice on the inside. Okay, vinaigrette, we're gonna, I'm gonna build it in the bottom of a big bowl that I'm gonna toss the grains and everything in. Um, and then we're gonna take part of it out to serve on the side. So I'm gonna do a quarter cup of capers, roughly chopped. So I usually just kind of hold the spoon against the side of the jar to let like the majority of the liquid come out, but some of the caper brine is completely fine. I sometimes will do um, like just, if I have like leftover pasta or if I cook up some pasta, just kind of plain and I'll throw some capers on there. It's so good. Just like a little something different, you know, like it doesn't always have to be marinara. So they're already pretty small. I'm just gonna kind of roughly chop. They do also sell like bigger caper berries and they're usually salt packed. You don't wanna use those in this recipe. I've only ever seen them like at restaurants. Um, I've seen them in the grocery store, like in the jars, but in restaurants, um, they tend to be like as a garnish on like a niçoise salad or something. Um, I don't see them. I don't see people at home using them too often because they are like, they're very salty. <laughs> so I'm putting the capers right in there. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of Dijon mustard. Make sure you shake it first so that you don't get that gross like mustard water. I usually just kind of give it one little squirt over the sink just to make sure because I don't know what it is <laughs> about that. It just like, it seems so gross. Um, when you're, especially if you're like putting it on a hot dog or something and you just get like water. Um, we're gonna add about a quarter cup of chopped parsley. And this vinaigrette is like, you could change it up if you don't want to do parsley. You could do another type of herb if you'd like, switch things up. Turn that off. And you can, you don't have to be super exact with the amounts. Um, it might be nice also with like some sun-dried tomatoes. 
mixed in, like chopped up real fine. Um, if you were gonna use something like tarragon, I would say maybe either just use like half the amount because tarragon is a pretty strong flavor. Um, or you could do half parsley because parsley is like, you get that fresh herbiness, but it's not like super flavorful. Um, dill would be great. I think that would be nice in there. So pretty much equal parts, Dijon, capers, and um, parsley. And then I'm gonna add two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. If you don't have white wine, you can use regular white vinegar. If you have champagne vinegar, that'd be nice. Uh, red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar. I think this one works nicely with the flavors here, but don't, don't beat yourself up if you don't have like every type of vinegar in your house. Uh, and then um, half a cup of olive oil. Get my liquid measuring cup. And I'm gonna, let's see, this might, this might take a minute. <laughs> I got my like, little drizzly nozzle on here. Um, but anyway, if you have, I do have a couple more um, classes scheduled, but if you have requests for future classes, I'm always happy to, you know, see if I have a recipe that would work for a class. Not everything's really doable in an hour, um, which is usually how long my classes are, but i um, always happy to explore new recipes. I do have one that I've been developing and I did it with one of my, private class students recently for taquitos. And that's another one that um, you can do with beef or turkey or beyond meat. Um, and you like make the mixture and then you bake them. And we made a little pico de gallo to go on top. That was really good. Um, all right, I've got half a cup of olive oil. I'm not even gonna be like delicate and like stream it in while we whisk. I don't think it's necessary on this one. Then I'm gonna, I'm only gonna add pepper right now I'll taste it after and I feel like if it needs more salt I might just throw in a little of the caper brine but I'm just going to whisk this together and it looks like a lot right now because it is I'm going to take some out so you could taste this just for seasoning it's very tangy because of the the Dijon and everything but I think that's good I'm gonna remove a third of the cup out. Sorry, a third of a cup out of this. And we'll use that to serve alongside. And if you feel like it's a little too thick, you can thin it out with a little more, um, a little bit more oil if you'd like. And I haven't tried it with this recipe, but it might work to use um, a little bit of Greek yogurt instead of only the, um, oil. It doesn't always work in recipes, but sometimes. So I'm going to put that in this little pitcher and I'll just bring that to the table with everything. And then to this bowl of vinaigrette, I'm going to add the cooked still warm grains. So if you add them while they're still warm, it's nice because it'll kind of absorb the uh, It'll absorb the vinaigrette into the each grain. So I just mix this up. Everything's nice and coated. And if you want, again, if you wanted to taste it now, once the since the um, grains are in to see for seasoning, you could. Um, I might wait until I put my veggies in because we'll toss. Um, uh, I guess we don't toss the veggies in. You could toss the veggies in here. I'll taste it like this. Just keep in mind that you're going to have some seasoned veggies on top also. So let's see. I think, I think it could use a little bit more salt. The first time I made this, like an extra round of seasoning at the end really made a difference. So I'm going to do a little bit more of the caper brine. Or you could do salt and pepper. Around here. Alexa, how much time is left? All right. So this is gonna hang out. We have 11 minutes left on our veggie timer. I'm gonna let this hang out. I'm gonna slice some radishes. I, I like having something kind of cool and crunchy on top. 
you don't have to use radishes. Um, I, I love these little like multicolored radishes, radishes of many colors from Trader Joe's, but um, a lot of stores sell like a bunch of various colored radishes and farmers markets, especially in the spring, tend to have that kind of cutting up a couple different colored radishes just for garnish on top. And I, I feel like a lot of times um, radishes kind of use part of the, the container and then they kind of sit in your fridge and get a little sad. So I'll give you some ideas for ways to use them. They're great sliced on top of tacos, like on top of your warm tacos, just as like a little garnish. Um, you can even, you can slice them in half, dip them in melted butter, like, um, like, especially if you get like a nice kind of fancy butter and sprinkle a little flaky salt and put them in the freezer to let it sit. And then it's just like a little nibble. It's very nice. Um, if you enjoy Persian food, a lot of times like at Persian restaurants, they'll do, I'm just cutting the ends off of these right now and then cutting them in half. So I'm going to slice them momentarily. Um, but they'll do a little platter alongside all of the main dishes that have um, some, they usually take the radishes and cut them kind of into wedges. So some radishes and some usually curly parsley and feta cheese, that's always nice. Maybe a couple olives. Um, or just put them on top of a salad. There's a lot of ways to use them. I just, I feel like there's certain ingredients that tend to um, lose their way and I've only used part of the package in the fridge. So I'm always looking for more ways to save that. Um, so for, for the radishes to go on top, you can cut them in a couple different ways just to make them look kind of pretty. Um, one way would be just really thin half moons like this. Just going as thinly as I can. Um, also these, the, the lighter colored, like the pink radishes are usually not quite as spicy as the red ones. So just something to keep in mind if, uh, if radishes have been abrasive <laughs> in the past to you. Um, you could also do, if you turn it, let's see, we'll turn it on its side and cut it again this way. So I had, I'll show this for the Replay. I had it in half this way and now I took it and I went down in this direction. So we're going to cut some little kind of sticks. I think those look pretty too. And that way you get a little bit of the color of the radish on the ends of each. So you get these like little, you know, little sticks um, with a little color. You don't have to peel radishes, which is nice because I feel like they'd be pretty annoying to peel. Um, but yeah, any other, um, I don't know if cucumbers would go really well with this particular mix of veggies, but that's another type of thing that I sometimes will put on top at the end of a dish just to have something kind of cool and refreshing. Um, and I do have, I have some avocados in the fridge. Those might, those might go well with it, especially if you weren't doing an egg, um, and you don't have that little bit of protein on there. So. Again, whatever you have in the fridge um, or in your pantry that you're trying to use up, um, maybe a little little feta cheese could work or a couple, couple pieces of goat cheese. Um, see, I think this is sometimes depending on the size of your veggies, the um, Brussels sprouts might need a few more minutes to cook than the squash or vice versa. I think it's usually the, um, the uh, usually the squash, sometimes I'll flip it over and it needs another few minutes, but we will see. Just kind of suss it out when you get there. Um, oh, also radish is another good kind of snack. Um, if you do a piece of bread with, again, if you have like a nice butter, it's nice. It doesn't have to be, I mean, it can, you can do like, Kerrygold, it doesn't have to be some fancy French butter, but it's like a Kerrygold or a nice Irish butter or something like that. Um, and then put the sliced radishes like these on top of the butter and a little flaky salt. There's just something about butters, butter, radishes, and salt that's a really good combination. Um, I'm gonna see, Alexa, how much time is left? 
she tells me six and a half minutes, but I'm gonna check because it might, some of the veggies might be done already. Um, let's see, let's see how we're looking. If I take this, let me scoop these. If I take my knife and just kind of pierce, squash is already done. Ooh, my Brussels sprouts are pretty done too. You could um, get my spatula. Could flip everything and just give it another moment. I do, I do tend to like them a little bit more brown. Um, the Brussels sprouts are getting a nice char on them, which is nice. So what I think I'm gonna do is um, broil these briefly. So if you have an electric oven like I do, um, well, either, either type of oven you have, you want the rack to be, the oven rack to be on the top. So it's right underneath the heating element. Um, going to broil for maybe two minutes. If you have an electric oven, you want to keep the door cracked. So usually like mine, if I pull it a little bit, it sticks there instead of being all the way open. Um, if yours doesn't and you have an electric oven, if you have like a wooden spoon, something that's only wood on the end, you can stick it in here, just the wood part, just to kind of keep it cracked open. Um, if you, on an electric oven, the heating element for a broiler will keep kicking off and on because if the door is closed, it thinks, oh good, we're hot enough, I can kick off, but it really needs to stay on the entire time to kind of serve the purpose of a broiler. So I'll leave it cracked open. If you have a gas oven, that's a flame, it's on. You can just leave it, you can leave the door closed. So that's great. Um, but the broiler is like a really great tool. Um, you can use it to cook all sorts of stuff. I'll do like this grill seasoning. Oh, okay, I'll get you the link for that. I'll do like just veggies tossed in a little bit of olive oil with this grill seasoning and roast them. And like just a few minutes, it gets nice. And if you let them go a little bit longer, you'll get some char. Um, that's my grill seasoning blend. I make a big batch and just kind of keep it for times like this, but it's just salt, pepper. You wanna use the ground black pepper, not the fresh ground. So you wanna use like this, the type that's already like finely ground. I mean, you could crack it in, but I don't think it'll work quite the same. Um, so it's got salt, kosher salt, pepper, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and chili powder. It's not enough chili powder to make it spicy. Um, it's just enough. I think uh, it works on so many things. So, and if you do uh, make that or any of my recipes, if you would click over to the link on my website for them and leave a comment with a star rating. It really helps um, when people are online searching for recipes, it helps my recipes show up. So I always appreciate that. Um, and if you post on social media, you can feel free to tag me at Big Flavors. I love to share them. Um, or you can just email them to me if, you're, if you just want to show off. But I always love seeing um, my recipes in different people's kitchens. So Let's, I let this broil for a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and do one bowl. You can assemble it however you like. I just, um, I find that like piles of things in different sections on a grain bowl makes it look very like intentional. So that's usually what I do. So I'll start with a couple scoops of this dressed farro, farro in the bottom. I'm gonna take one of these eggs. I'm just gonna dry it off because it was sitting in cold water. Just making sure my veggies aren't too um, browning too much over there yet. I'm gonna gently crack this because it's again soft boiled. And I just kind of crack it, roll it around, try to crack it on multiple sides. And then gently peel. And I always, after I peel, I always um, rinse it off just in case there's any little like tough pieces of shell. And like I said before, it's since it was sitting in ice water, 
this part is cold right now. So if you run it under warm water, it won't cook it more, but it'll kind of warm the egg back up a little bit. So I'm gonna set that there. I'm gonna grab my veggies out. Oh yeah. So just got like a little bit more color on there. And then I'll turn that off. I'm gonna do piles of the veggies on there. So on this, like I have an 11 year old, I'll let him pick like which veggies he wants. Cause I know he's not into squash, but again, anything, I have like asparagus and um, some broccoli in my fridge. Those would be great on here. Green beans, what any, really anything you have. And you could do this, you know, seasonally and do different veggies depending on what season it is. Moment of truth for this egg. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of pinch over it to hold it. Actually, no, I'm gonna do it over my bowl in case any of the yolk goes out so that it gets in my bowl and makes it nice and extra delicious. I'm being very careful because I'm cutting toward my hand. Um, nice and gentle. Got nice jammy egg and I'll bring it up to the other camera in a moment. Nice runny yolk. I'm going to do a couple different colors of these radishes. Alexa, stop. And then if you wanted to put a, a little bit more of the dressing on the top, you could, or if you wanted to wait to taste it and see if it needs any more, you could throw a little sprig of parsley on there if you liked, but there are, does yolk when it mixes in, look very nice and tasty. I might do a little bit of actually salt and pepper on top. I always think it kind of looks pretty on when eggs are dusted with a little bit of black pepper. And knowing me and my son, I'll probably add extra capers to mine because wild like that. So that is very colorful, healthy meal. The leftovers hold up great. You could either keep the things separately or you could just mix it all together. Um, and it's also good chilled. It's, you don't have to eat it warm if you don't want to. Um, does anybody have any questions? All right. Yes, Rachel. No, I would, no question. Just thank you. I'm excited to eat this. I'm thank just you. finishing my eggs. And, awesome. um, nope, that's great. And what's your email? My email is big flavors. Tiny, uh, I'll put it in the chat, but it's big flavors, tiny kitchen at gmail.com. Um, okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. And if it, when you taste it, if it feels like it needs like a little something, just a little more salt and pepper or a little bit more of that vinaigrette is usually. Um, okay. I don't know if vinaigrette, I don't know. I'm never good. I think it's got a, I don't know if it's too mustardy for me. So oh, what, okay. how, how do I cut that down? Um, so did you, it's already mixed in with everything? Yeah. Um, hmm. To cut that down, that's a good, I wonder if maybe a little, a little bit of honey maybe? Like just okay. like something for a little bit of sweetness to kind of counterbalance that or a little like white sugar if you have it and just like mix it all around. Um, okay. But I will make a note of that. And like when I go to update the recipe, I'll say maybe like three to four tablespoons instead. Cause I know like, I like things tangier than my husband he likes things saltier than me so it's always easy to add more but it's not as easy to take it away <laughs> right um, okay no the honey sounds like a great idea I think, yeah or like a if you have agave although that's like super sweet so you got to be careful how much um you add so you don't overcompensate in the other direction but okay or right. if, if you happen to have extra grains you could throw some extra grains in there and that would help too perfect awesome well, thanks thank so, you much. so much Thank you for cooking along with me and um, it was great to see you all. Thank, Thank you. you, Ashley. Thank you. It's Have a great night. Wonderful as always. Yep. Bye. See you next month. Yep. See ya. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. It was really wonderful. Oh, Hoda I'm going to stop the recording before you. I blow you all of the kisses. Hang on. Oh. <laughs>